last of seven kids, and one thing that we all did together was uh, draw. And what we would do is we'd get together and we had this really great toy, which was a monster maker. I could change the head, the torso, or the feet. And we'd, I'd create my little monster, and my brothers would come along and destroy it. They'd do arrows, they'd put guns, they'd put blood pools, which was heartbreaking at the time, but probably formed a lot of my darker sensibilities of my drawings. And it wasn't until high school when I really figured out I could create these imaginary worlds for a living. You know, this is what people do for a career. And it, it behind the bookcase just absolutely, you know, blew that wide open and made this an absolute dream because it's completely imaginative of what the world looks like and what the characters look like. Behind the bookcase is a story about a young girl who comes from California and she's moving into a house where her grandmother used to live. And in her bedroom, she discovers that her bookcase is a portal. It comes out from the wall and it's a portal to a whole new uh, world. This world is called Scotopia and it's a, wor uh, it's a world of shadows. And in that world lives a cat called Balthazat. While she's interested in Scotopia, Balthazat wants to see what her world is like. And as the story continues, it's, it's about her discovering more of these characters and all the problems that she's not quite able to fix as things unfold as it continues. And as she's meeting the different characters, um, she discovers that some of them are beneficial and some of them want her help, where other ones are just these forces against her and she needs to be able to figure out how to get past them in order to um, solve the problems that are in front of her. When I first read the book, I knew I couldn't wait to draw the Sentinels. In the way how they're describing how you first hear, uh, read about them and they're coming through the shadow trees um, and they're holding this sort of lantern that's ahead, instantly brought this sort of, oh, I need to draw this creepy, creepy character. Another character that was a good challenge was Jeb. Um, Jeb's missing half a face and it was still a real challenge to be able to get some of his facial features, expressions, in order to tell what he might be thinking or uh, in the drawing itself. And of course, Balthazat is one of my favorites as well. You know, using his body to kind of describe his slinking movements or, you know, a slight wince of the eye to kind of describe what he might be thinking or planning. Um, they were really fun characters to draw. When I was younger, I remember how I would get so nervous that I wasn't able to draw something as perfect as I wanted to. But I realized that the imagination and the ideas behind things were so much richer in that your skill would eventually come the more you practice, the more you draw. Um, so instead of seeing that blank page as something threatening or scary, the blank page is full of potential and fun and opportunity. So it's best to just start with a new page.